Well, let's get more now on the geopolitics of what's happening in Ukraine, as well as a take on the military operation as well. We can speak to Lauren Speranza, who's the director of the Centre for European Policy Analysis, Transatlantic Defence and Security Programme. Uh, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Um, first of all, are you surprised by the level of resistance that Ukraine has been able to put up so far? And do you think it can last? I think the entire world and, and Vladimir Putin uh, were all surprised by the resistance that the Ukrainians have put up so far. It's really been a remarkable uh, and impressive effort, uh, despite being outnumbered and, and the Russian military having more firepower. But I think the Russians also miscalculated. You can tell just by the operation that they uh, and the tactics that they started out with that they thought this was going to be a much quicker victory. They did not come in with the kind of uh, severe preparations that you would typically see the Russian military using for a conventional invasion. I think they thought this would uh, be a lot easier. And, uh, you know, we're seeing a lot of the reporting come in that. Uh, Putin himself is extreme, increasingly frustrated with the lack of traction that they're having in Ukraine. But um, while I do think you know, this has been a really admirable effort by Ukraine so far and that they are continuing to receive more Western assistance, you know, it's increasingly difficult to get that assistance inside Ukraine. And, and even if uh, you can get it across the border, it's unlikely that you can get it into uh, the cities where it's needed most, especially in Kyiv. So, um, you know, I think the Russians are also starting to change their tactics, noting their failures. So unfortunately, I think we're about to see, uh, we're already starting to see this fight get much more lethal and much more brutal very quickly. Well, yes, talk us through what change in tactics you're already seeing and what you expect to change in the next few days. Sure. So I think we're already starting to see uh, the Russian military start to resupply and reorganize a bit differently. They're sort of pausing some of their uh, offenses that they were running. Uh, they're starting to, to bring up more logistics and support so that they don't have some of their units exposed uh, uh, for so long in front of their support. And I, I think... Uh, we're starting to see them use increasingly uh, more fires, taking out uh, civilian infrastructure. We saw the, the missile strike on Kiev TV tower today. And I think uh, we're starting to see heavier shelling in, in cities like Kharkiv. And unfortunately, I think this is, this is going to continue. It's going to be uh, similar to the tactics that we saw the Russian military use in Aleppo uh, or in Chechnya. People are, are using that as an example as well. And, uh, you know, I think also one thing that we haven't seen as much of yet is uh, Russia's traditional electronic warfare uh, and cyber attacks which, uh, you know, I was talking to some colleagues on the ground in Ukraine and they're expecting, you know, more telecommunications attacks and things like that to come. You know, right now, the networks are still up. You can still use your cell phones, but I think uh, those types of attacks are, are things that we will likely see more of in the future. And we're just looking at pictures of the attack on the TV station earlier today. Meanwhile, this huge 40-mile-long convoy is on the outskirts of the capital. So what do you expect that to do once it reaches the city? Is it, is it expected to surround the city, to, to look for some kind of surrender, or do you expect it to, to move into the city centre? Well, I don't think that uh, Putin has really thought through the the entire end game. I mean, even if uh, he is able to create a situation where uh, the the city uh, of Kiev could be surrounded and he could install a sort of puppet government, I think. One uh, massive miscalculation is that he's underestimated the, the resilience of the Ukrainian people and their society. And I don't think uh, any effort uh, to install a puppet government, I don't think would be long lasting. And uh, it would take uh, a lot of resources on the Russian side to be able to to maintain that for, for very long. So the staying power uh, would not be uh, long term in, in my view. So um, I think the most important thing that, that we can do as the West now is to give the Ukrainians as much support and equipment as we can. And even if that doesn't necessarily mean that that they win the, the war, we're putting them in a better position for the eventual negotiations and the peace talks that will follow. What about a no-fly zone? We heard... Uh... Prime Minister Boris Johnson just responding to a Ukrainian journalist in Warsaw earlier on today, uh, saying that uh, there wasn't a will to, to go down that road. The fear was of getting uh, drawn into an all-out war between NATO and Russia. Do you think that policy will stick? 
It's a difficult situation because of course, yes, enforcing a no-fly zone would require, you know, taking either shooting down Russian jets or taking out Russian air defense systems on Russian territory, which of course would be be escalatory. I think uh, now we're hearing some calls for more creative solutions where you could potentially look to create a secure corridor that could at least allow the passage of humanitarian supplies. Uh, but I'm also uh, hearing, uh, reporting that, you know, troops on the ground on the Belarusian side or Russian side are trying to potentially uh, hijack those those supplies that are coming across and interfere with that. So um, the more difficult that it is to get these supplies in and uh, the more bombings and, and civilian casualties that we start to see uh, on the ground, I think Western leaders are going to increasingly feel that pain. And, and if we don't do more uh, to be able to deliver this assistance in those supplies now, you know, it's only gonna get worse. And I think when we look back on this, we're going to have regret as the West that we did not do more when we could to prevent all of this damage. Well, Lauren Speranza, I'm really interested to get your take on the situation in Ukraine. We really appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me.